have this really awesome ego, we're sure we're just really awesome. And some of us, a lot of us, really are awesome. Some of us aren't as awesome as we think we are. Um, so, it kind of goes hand in hand with the man in the mirror presentation a moment ago, because when you're lost in thinking, I'm really awesome, but I haven't actually learned to be that awesome yet, it's taking time to figure out, am I there yet? What do I need to do in order to be that person? Um, years ago, when the internet got started, people had really, really awesome relationships over the internet. Mostly because anytime somebody sent you a message, if it upset you, if it made you joyful, whatever its circumstance was, you had time to stop and think about how you were going to react to that message. It's really great for a relationship on the internet because in person, when somebody says that very same thing to you, it might ignite you like this and you don't have time to think about it anymore. And you explode all over them. In an internet relationship, that never happens because they never get to see that. So, 
not sure why I'm flying at this one, but it's about anytime something wants to upset you, it's remembering stop, breathe. Is whatever's upsetting you really about that person? Did they say something that reminds you of an old feeling? Um, relationships are really, really awesome. There was a poster on Facebook not long ago that mentioned finding that special person isn't about somebody accepting you and all your junk, because we all come with junk. We like our junk. We hang on to it forever. Uh, it's about finding somebody that's willing to help you unpack that junk. That when you're in a relationship with someone and they say things that trigger you, or you say things that trigger them, instead of destroying the relationship, stop in the relationship, realize that your junk isn't about them, theirs isn't about you. Don't take it personal. Teach them not to take it personal. And discover together where that junk came from, so you can unpack it, get rid of it. Because then you get to turn into a really awesome person. I'm pretty sure you are. But it always takes us time to get there. Who am, who am I now? Who do I want to be? You're all really great at something in life. Most of us get to do that something. More of us don't get to do that something. We spend really a lot of time being frustrated with the world because everything you dreamed about, everything you wanted to do with your life, just isn't right here, right now. And instead of taking the time to decide, is what I want still true with me here? Or is that something you wanted 10 years ago, 20 years ago? doesn't really line up with who you are now, so you could actually decide to do something else with your life. Um, or that's something that you've put on the shelf for the last 25 years or whatever. Really is that true something within your soul? And you need to have give in to that, that midlife crisis idea that a lot of people get. And go, you know, my life isn't working how I'm doing it. If I do this, I think it will. And then you decide, yes, it really will. Go out and do that. It doesn't matter what the rest of the world thinks. Because the only person that needs to be happy in your soul is you, because it's your soul. And if you're going to share joy and passion with the world, you have to feel that joy and passion within yourself. If you're stuck at a job, if you're doing anything that just turns your soul upside down, you're in the wrong place. And it's up to you to change that, do something better. missing those horses now. Um, well, I guess this next part kind of goes into the last part. My place in the world. Um, you, you could be doing something as simple as flipping burgers at McDonald's. And if you're putting every ounce of your passion and your joy into every time you flip that burger, you are in the right place. You're doing your part in the world because your love, your passion, like every five-year-old out there, they are so full of love and passion. There is nothing else that exists in the world except for that moment they're in, and they do it full on. And it's reminding yourself that as adults, we don't have to take that away from ourselves. We can live like a five-year-old, like that five-year-old out. Sometimes that five-year-old just wants to stop their feet and kick them and go, no, I don't want to. But it's giving yourself permission to do that. Because sometimes the no, I'm not going to, is the perfect, the exact thing you should be doing. And you need to give yourself permission to say no. Just as much as you need to give yourself permission to say yes when you, when it is a yes for you. Because if you say it with the same passion, when your no is a no, and you know it is, and you still get into it, you destroy yourself every time you give into that no. That's not good for you, or is it? What would I change if I could? Have you ever thought, if I could change just this one thing, the whole world would be fine? It'd be 
see something in your love life, your play life, your work life, your hobbies. Some of us have had really great hobbies when we were in our 20s or younger. And because of work, because of children, because of wives, because of husbands, we don't enjoy any of our hobbies anymore. And not taking time to enjoy those hobbies means that piece of you that's, that's really joyful, really happy, doesn't get to come out and play. And when none of that gets to come out and play, that same unhappiness is what you're going to share with your children. Because you'll shut them down. You won't let them play because you don't get to play. You won't play with your husband or your wife the way that you should. Because I'm shut down, so I'm not going to, you know, misery loves company. If I'm going to be unhappy, I'm going to make darn sure you're so much more unhappy than I am, so I can feel good. Bad. <laughs> I like sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> and same thing with your work. If you're extremely unhappy in your work, you need to change it because that same unhappiness. Some some people are really good at being able to. There was an example of um, perfect a tree. You have a tree outside your yard. When you have gone to work, if your work is something you just can't give up because you're stuck in that career and it's got to be something, and it's just crappy, rather than take that crappy home and kick the dogs and kick the kids and scream at the wife or the husband, anytime you come home, kind of in your mind, maybe even physically, you can walk up to the tree and take all the junk from that day and hang it on the tree. When you walk into your home, you walk in with all the love and passion that that family deserves to share with you. Because all that junk that's hanging on that tree will be there tomorrow when you go back to work. I have, I don't know, have any of you ever done visualizations where you close your eyes and you play with your mind for a minute? You're going to close your eyes. <laughs> He's going to fall into a, a real awesome place. So, I want to do a little visualization. So, uncross your legs. Uncross your arms as they are. Get into that nice, relaxed, joyful space. I want you to Float back into your mind any time from your childhood to now. Whenever quiet moment, whatever joyful moment, whatever it was that made you feel so much love inside that you were going to burst. You could be the small child playing with marbles and you're winning. And you're getting everybody's marbles. So you're really happy. <laughs> First time you got an A on a test. First time you walked around the park with holding the hand of a boy or a girl. That was something new and fun. So it just made your heart joyful. <laughs> Where were we? <laughs> Where were we? Yes. Playing in those joyful, playful places in your mind. Going back to the, you know, hopefully you weren't one of those boys got a lot of joy out of picking on the kid next door and that brought you joy. But if it did, feel that joy. <laughs> Whatever it is that makes your heart absolutely happy and joyful. Eyes are supposed to be closed. <laughs> That same laughter, that same thing you're feeling now. What I want you to do is just kind of play in those. Enjoy them for a few minutes, a moment. Take a few deep breaths. Really feel them from your nose to your toes, back again. Just how joyful those moments felt. And when you've played there long enough, I want you to come back to now, but I want you to bring that same love, passion, joy, whatever it was that worked for you, into this moment. When you've done that, and I want you 
to feel this moment, and feel that love and joy in you, and remember anytime, anywhere you are in your life, when something has you upset, frustrated, angry, that same love and joy that you're feeling right now, because all it takes is thinking about something joyful, all that anger, all that stuff can go away because it's only a matter of a thought that changes what you're feeling in your body. When somebody wants to anger you, decide whether or not they're trying to anger you and sit there and laugh at them, enjoy the show for your trying. Find this peaceful space. Remember, joy, love, passion is always available to you, anywhere you are, all the time. joy, a little happy, just thinking of happy fun times in our past. I'm hoping. Anyway. Um, would anyone feel like sharing where it was they went with the group? So, um, I went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> On a Saturday morning, when I was a little girl, and I didn't have to get up for school, I would lay in bed, and I would sing, and sing, and sing all the songs I knew. And that just started my day with great joy. Very cool. <laughs> When I was five, I lived in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and I had a red bike that I used to love to ride all the time. And um, so I rode around, and I fell over, and I ran into a bush. I got back on, and I rode some more, and I was like, hmm, I'm kind of hungry. So I went and held up a donut shop. <laughs> I did. I took my fingers and went, this is a stick-up. I need a donut. They thought it was so darn cute and so funny that they gave me a donut. <laughs> and so I ate my donut and I rode around and I was having a fun time and I felt so good that I could ask for what I wanted and I got a donut. <laughs> and I didn't know cool. that it was wrong. You know, I just, you know, you see it. And so I went back home and I told my mom and she was just so upset with me and I didn't understand. It so true. It's really true. <laughs> <laughs> So I um, took the money back and gave it to the donut shop, and I never, I never thought I was bad or wrong. And to this day, I still don't think it was terrible because it was just so much fun. Mm -hmm. So I. Um, what were you doing? You're giving me anything bad. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You held up a donut shop. It's annoying. <laughs> and so um, I think back to when I was in oh, kindergarten, oh, and oh. you don't know what's right and wrong. And you just no, 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 <laughs> and so you just have fun. And I had so much fun because I used to go visit the fire station, and I liked to carry around baby dolls, and I used to pretend house and I play house. So I went back to when it was really fun, and nothing really was wrong, you know. And then as we grow, then we learn what's acceptable and what's not, and then try to teach our kids what's acceptable and what's not. Don't tell them if we do something wrong. So anyways, yes, that made me happy. And you ask at 100%. And I ask at 100% with my two little fingers and my little fingers. There's nothing wrong with asking at 100% power. You were asking at 100%. Now you're glad you came to my workshop. Yes. I went back to being on a swing 
I love swings, you know, especially when you're a girl, you know, when you go to park, that's where my eyes went. I was like, oh, I run across the field or whatever to get on the tallest thing possible and swing as high and far as possible. And in those moments, um, even as an adult, when I get on a swing, I feel a wind through my hair mm -hmm. and just the feel of the body just going back and forth. It's just like, it's a, it's a moment that I just get to be in pure joy and forget about the world. Mm -hmm. I love that. And now all I have is a porch swing and oh. I'm barely, you know, <laughs> like this, swing like this, but just that little feel makes me happy. I just like calm Does this need to be greased up or what? <laughs> <laughs> No, no just the porch swing has it's a very small amount. Yeah, no, like yeah. He's like, I can help it go higher. <laughs> 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 Joyful spaces are an awesome place to play in. It's a good time to, to take you to. Oh, 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 oh. We, we, we just wants oh, to get you started. I want to share. Yes, Mr. Gray. The, the part that I got okay. during that visualization. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna listen to the sister. That's right. I'm always the right. Sisters are smart. Yeah, little sisters are always right. <laughs> Except when they're not right. <laughs> we'll watch out for that dead one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, right. Okay, well, I'm sharing about that. I, I remember chasing the pony that we were actually chasing the rainbow and it landed on our pony. So that's. It so landed was the, on an outhouse. <laughs> no, that was the other time. Oh. It was, it was right on the outhouse. Yeah, because we, when we grew up, we, we, we actually had to use the outhouse. You know, the outhouse is when you And he made me run. Well, he's like, keep going. Keep going, keep going. He's my little sister, so it's like, keep going, keep going. It was so much fun. To revisit that. Thank you. Catch the rainbow. Catch the rainbow. It's the crapper house. I was like, Gary, come here, look, look what I found. Anyways, go ahead. Then. Yeah, it's just it's so much fun. Or the and, yeah, yeah, it's an outhouse. The end of the rainbow. Yeah, outhouse. Well, at least one rainbow. The pony one, yeah. Go ahead. That and is the, the, the pot one. at the end of the rainbow. It was, it was a pot. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> in the ground. Hole in the ground. Yeah, it's oh. cold in the winter. But anyway. We live up in the mountains really far. Keep going. You're doing awesome. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So, oh, sorry. I heard someone else say pretty much the same thing. But, uh, come on here. but uh, when I had my first child, I was so overjoyed and danced and so forth. Just one thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got her keys. <laughs> you were that child? You were that child. Oh, so oh. She's still smiling. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, How did I stop smiling with my mom like that? Oh, dance. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes. Yeah. I was so happy with my visualization memory um, because I was remembering back when I was a little girl and it was probably through my whole childhood really but since I was little I would go outside and be barefoot my mom let me run around barefoot whenever mm -hmm. I wasn't at school or at the store even at the store sometimes but I remember just loving to dig my toes down in the dirt the warm dirt and walk around by the sunflowers and just take plums out the trees and lay down by the southern road and watch the birds. And mm -hmm. Our whole family was out there working the yard and it just felt like I just loved plants and growing things with people and helping trees. I love that for me. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Mm -hmm. However, do you give yourself permission to do that now? 
deciding to stop being too busy to go find it. Mm. So, in conclusion, I'm hoping, kind of like at the beginning, that my messages, my ideas, my thoughts that I've shared with you will inspire good things that you can take with you and maybe inspire your lives to do that little bit more one thing, even if it's just one thing, because one always grows into more. So, start in one place and keep on going. Thank you. I believe it's time for my Gary guy to come back up here. Is he paying attention to us? No. Mr. It? Gary. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Mr. Gary. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.